In Hollywood, genuine friendships between legends are rare. Yet Clint Eastwood and Don Rickles forged a once-in-a-lifetime bond rooted in laughter, loyalty, and mutual respect. Their unlikely pairing seemed straight from a movie script, the steely-eyed cowboy and the motor-mouthed funny man. Join us as Factsverse presents Don Rickles reveals how he felt about Clint Eastwood. Polar Opposites Collide At first glance, Clint Eastwood and Don Rickles appeared to inhabit different worlds. Eastwood was a strong, silent type with a steely squint and gravelly baritone voice. He portrayed some of cinema's most iconic tough guys. Rickles, the rapid-fire insult comic who built a career ridiculing Hollywood elites. Even politically, they seemed polar opposites. Eastwood was a prominent conservative who attended Eisenhower's inauguration and idolized patriotic screen legends like John Wayne. Rickles was a lifelong liberal known for lambasting authority and supporting progressive causes. But for all their perceived differences, in 1970 their paths intersected on the set of the World War II comedy Kelly's Heroes, forging one of Hollywood's most legendary friendships. The film shot on location in Yugoslavia, its arid plains and abandoned villages still bearing the scars of war. It was an unlikely breeding ground for a Tinseltown bond to blossom between the man with the permanent squint and the one with the motor mouth. Eastwood arrived there an established star on the heels of his iconic spaghetti western roles. Rickles, while admired among comedians for his caustic celebrity roasts, had not yet broken through to mainstream success. During filming, Rickles endlessly cracked jokes at Eastwood's expense between takes. To the surprise of the crew, the often serious Eastwood took Rickles' barbs in stride, laughing along or volleying dry comebacks. This banter carried over into their on-screen chemistry, with Eastwood's steely-eyed Private Kelly playing the straight man to Rickles' wise-cracking Sergeant Crap Game. Their natural rapport enhanced their scenes together, forging a connection that continued off-camera. Rickles' incessant teasing of Eastwood only seemed to cement their burgeoning friendship. As filming went on, their bond evolved beyond surface-level comedy to reveal an underlying kinship. Underneath the mismatched exteriors lay a surprising alignment of outlook, principles, and values. Though different in style and persona, at their core, both men prized honesty, family, and not taking themselves too seriously. For Rickles, Eastwood's willingness to be the butt of his jokes signaled a down-to-earth humility rare among screen icons. For Eastwood, Rickles' constant ribbing was a badge of acceptance into his inner circle. The Laughs That Last During their decades-long friendship, Rickles often targeted Clint Eastwood for his caustic brand of comedy. And despite his relentless teasing and heckling, Eastwood took it all in stride, often breaking into exasperated laughter. As Eastwood's fame grew, Rickles' mockery of the, quote, man with no name only intensified. Nevertheless, Eastwood continued to tolerate and enjoy Rickles' antics, responding to his jabs with good-natured eye rolls and smiles. Even as Rickles poked fun at Eastwood's acting abilities and love life, Eastwood remained a good sport, keeping the laughs flowing freely. The American Film Institute's tribute to Eastwood in 1996 and Kennedy Center Honors in 2000 were the pinnacle of their careers. At both events, Rickles stole the show by relentlessly teasing Eastwood before esteemed black tie audiences. While honorees and dignitaries squirmed, Rickles roasted his friend with wise cracks about Eastwood's make my day catchphrase and sexual prowess. However, Eastwood's grinning and guffawing revealed the mutual affection underlying each stinging punchline. What seemed to outsiders like a harsh teasing was, to the duo, the ultimate display of their rare bond. Of course, the good times were only half the story. In the low moments that dotted their parallel journeys, Rickles and Eastwood continued to serve as stalwart comrades for one another. Rickles' decades-long struggle with depression saw Eastwood become a tireless supporter, while the comedian comforted his friend through difficult divorces and career crossroads. Eastwood even helped pay extensive medical bills when Rickles suffered a near-fatal heart attack in the 1980s, asking for nothing in return. By 2007, when Rickles was awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, Eastwood proudly stood by his side as the industry finally recognized what he had always known, 
that his friend's humor and heart represented the best that entertainment had to offer. The laughs had lasted across the decades, becoming the glue of a peerless friendship the likes of which Tinseltown had seldomly seen. About the movie, let's talk a little bit more about Kelly's Heroes. Released in 1970, Kelly's Heroes brought together an all-star cast for a comedic take on the heist genre set against the backdrop of World War II. Clint Eastwood leads as the titular Kelly, an opportunistic private who hatches a scheme to steal a fortune in Nazi gold after learning of its location from a captured German officer. Seeking assistance for the brazen plan, Kelly recruits a motley crew that epitomizes the phrase ragtag bunch. There's his sardonic supply sergeant, played by Rickles, a spaced-out tank commander, portrayed by Donald Sutherland, and a cynical sergeant brought to life by Telly Savalas. This unlikely platoon heads behind enemy lines, facing obstacles from mines to tiger's tanks, in hopes of pulling off their $16 million heist right under the Germans' noses. The film's premise was inspired by the true story of millions in stolen Nazi gold covered up by the U.S. government in the aftermath of WW2. Although the characters and events of the movie are fictionalized, screenwriter Troy Kennedy Martin drew from a real-life heist known as the greatest robbery in history. With its blend of action, comedy, and crime that eschewed the somber tone of most war movies, Kelly's Heroes was ahead of its time. Its shady soldiers were more anti-heroes than clear-cut heroes, and the film didn't shy away from the dark side of conflict amidst the humor. Combined with a cast packed with eventual icons, these elements helped cement Kelly's Heroes as a cult classic. The movie was filmed on location in the village of Vizinata, with explosive set pieces and spectacular military stunts. Behind the scenes, Eastwood and Rickles forged their real-life friendship to parallel their on-screen chemistry as the reserved sergeant and wise-cracking supply officer. Their comedic interplay left a lasting impression on viewers. While Kelly's heroes divided contemporary critics, present-day reviewers view it as a seminal WW2 film that found the tonal sweet spot between comedy and gravity. Now, 50 years later, Kelly's Heroes continues to win over new fans with its tale of soldiers trying to profit from their perilous situation in the closing days of World War II. Yugoslavia in 1969 was an unconventional choice for a major Hollywood production. The Balkan country provided expansive plains and villages scarred by recent war, a stark backdrop mirroring WW2's devastation. But the decision forced the cast and crew far from the comforts of a studio into a rugged rural setting. Transportation was limited, with Tito-era infrastructure still recovering from conflict. It was a complex shoot with tanks, explosives, and intricate battle scenes. The film's editing was also eventful. Earlier cuts ran more than three hours, needing drastic slimming. Entire scenes were cut, subplots were truncated, and characters' backstories were lost. For Rickles, his screen relationship with Telly Savalas was all but removed. Such trimming frustrated both Eastwood and Rickles, who had invested heavily in bringing Kelly's heroes to life. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know that Clint Eastwood and Don Rickles were so close? Did it surprise you to hear that? Let us know in the comments section below.